Okay, we're going to sketch the graph, and this is all that we are told about the function. So if you're asked to do something like this, now, they're not going to ask you to do this on the AP exam. Okay, they're not. But what this is doing is this is testing your deep understanding of all the different rules and uh, what these things tell you. Okay, um, so if you know how to do this, you should be able to answer the questions where they give you a graph and they say, well, what's true about this? You know, the function's increasing on this interval or function's conquered down on this interval, that sort of thing. Okay, all right, so the first thing that they tell us is f of 2 is equal to f of 4, which is equal to 0. So anytime they give you specific points like that, that's where you want to start. You want to plot those points. So when x is 2, our function is equal to 0. When x is 4, our function is equal to 0. Those are the only two definite points that we have um, for this graph. Okay. All right. Now, let's read the other ones. We're going to read them before we start actually doing anything with them. All right. f prime of x is less than 0. Well, less than 0 means it's negative. So f prime is negative when x is less than 3, which means if f prime is negative, what does that tell us about f? It's decreasing, right? The function is decreasing to the left of 3. f prime of 3 does not exist. Now, they didn't say f of 3 doesn't exist. So it is continuous. They say f prime of 3 does not exist. That means you can't take the derivative there. So that's probably like a sharp point, something like that. F prime of x is greater than 0, so f prime is positive, which means f is increasing when x is greater than 3, so to the right of 3. And then they tell us that the second derivative is less than 0, so f double prime is negative when x is not equal to 3. So everywhere except for at 3, f double prime is negative, meaning f is concave down. Our entire function is concave down except at 3, and it's not concave down at 3 because it's not differentiable at 3. So it doesn't have any concavity. So what we can draw from this is... Um, to the left of 3, I am decreasing and I'm concave down. Whoops. You want to go with the simplest case scenario, and that looks really awful. That is decreasing and it's concave down. It's not super concave, but it is concave down. And that's supposed to happen until we get to 3. At 3, we have a sharp point. At 3, we begin increasing, but we are still concave down. So this is the simplest scenario that we could draw for these given conditions right here. Completely continuous. It didn't tell us that it was discontinuous anywhere. Um, we've got the increasing. We've got the decreasing. It's concave down everywhere except at 3 because it's not differentiable at 3. We've got that sharp point and we go through the two specific points that they ask us to go through. Okay? So don't make it complicated. Um, this is kind of, we did this before with limits. Okay? Now, technically, that we know first and second derivatives, we could put all those together. We could throw some limits in here uh, to give it some more detail. Uh, but this just has derivatives and second derivatives in it. But remember, the, uh, the main point with those was it's got to be a function. It's got to pass the vertical line test. So make sure that when you're drawing these, you don't have any crossing lines. Now, for some reason, I think it's because the derivatives are a little uh, more straightforward, maybe. People don't tend to have the issue that they have with having too many lines going on like they do with the limits. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to show you that example. So, 